the single best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism is What does your morning routine look like at the moment? Uh, I'm waking up these days around 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. I'm trying to go to sleep by about 10.30 p.m. Sometimes it's 11, sometimes it's 10. When I wake up, I make a beeline for sunlight, so I'm gonna get sunlight in my eyes. The single best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism <laughs> is to get natural light in your eyes early in the day. Don't wear sunglasses to do it. it. Takes about 10 minutes or so. If you live in a cloudy area, if you're in the UK in the winter, Yes. Or the summer. Or the summer, maybe you resort to some artificial light as a replacement, but as much as one can get bright, natural, and if not natural, artificial light in your eyes early in the day without sunglasses, contacts and eyeglasses are fine. Don't try and do it through a window or windshield. It's gonna take far too long. This sets in motion a huge number of different neurobiological and, and hormonal cascades that are good for you, reduces stress late at night, offsets cortisol, a million different things really that are good for you. So I get that. Ideally, that would be a walk, but sometimes we'll just go of the yard and have some coffee and and you know soak in whatever sunlight through through the clouds if it's a cloudy overcast day it might be 20 30 minutes if it's a very bright day it might just be a few minutes but really the the quality studies on humans that have looked at this say try and get as much natural light as you can in the morning hours whenever it is that that is for you i hydrate i drink water and then yerba mate is my favorite form of coffee uh, excuse me caffeine are you waiting how long are you waiting from 90 working? to 120 minutes are you doing any salts during that time are you taking any electrolytes in i, I am a fan of water with element yep. before i had element packets i would just take a little bit of, of sea salt but yeah i mean that's that's just the best way that cold glass of water and that first thing in the morning i do everything i can to not do email not do social media media and to take care of a few critical tasks. These days, I have this obsession with trying to do one cognitively hard thing a day and one physically hard thing a day. Now, it does not extreme physical, not David Goggins level workouts or anything, but in that 90 minutes, I'll typically try and read a research article start to finish, or I'll work on a document that I might be doing a grant or research paper or planning a podcast or researching a podcast. So I'm not necessarily trying to finish something in that time, but I try and do something challenging. Then I do caffeine about um, 90 to 120. 20 minutes after waking, I generally will then do some sort of physical workout. I have a very consistent routine. I've done it for 30 years where I weight train for 45 minutes to an hour every other day, always jogging or skipping rope. Those are my favorite forms of cardio, sometimes swimming, but typically I'll go running for 30 to 45 minutes. I'll sometimes throw on a, a weight vest, a 30 or 50 pound weight vest, and I'll go out for a shorter run. Yeah. So I'm, on the off days, I'm doing cardio. And sometimes that's in the morning, sometimes that's in the evening. I do not like to weight train in the second half of the day because I like to be really caffeinated when I I train. I like to listen to loud, fast music. I keep my phone off of for most workouts. Mm -hmm. Podcasts, maybe if I'm running, yep. but I really try hard when I'm working out to just focus on the workout. And those workouts, the weight training workouts, are always 10 minutes or so of warm up, and then no more than 40 to 50 minutes of really hard work. If I do train hard any longer, I don't recover enough to be able to come in a few days later. And you're taking yourself up until what's that? Probably maybe 10, 30, 11 a.m. Something like that. Now? Yeah, and then I'll eat my first real meal. Now, occasionally I'll wake up really hungry if I didn't eat that well the night before. Yeah. But typically, the after I train, I yeah I'll eat. I like oatmeal after I train. Oatmeal, fruit, some fish oil, protein drink, and then maybe 90 to 120 minutes after that, I'll have a real lunch. My lunch is pretty much the biggest meal of the day. If I have my way, it'll be a steak, a salad. I confess I usually will work a little bit more for about 30 minutes or an hour, typically email. And then I'll take a 10 to 30 minute yoga nidra nap or a nap and then come back refreshed. I really struggle with the naps, man. I come back after that and I'm, my emotions are all over the place. I'm disoriented. Maybe it's because I struggle to fall asleep super quickly and therefore I'm extending that period out for a little bit longer than I need. I probably need to try the yoga nidra thing but for me it's it i'm absolutely all over if i do that i wake up and I, I don't know what day it is and my emotions always feel a little bit out of whack as well i'll occasionally do if the nap is early enough in the day afterwards i'll have a you know a nice double espresso mm. and get back into work that's the hardest part of the day actually 
If I was well structured in the early part of the day, it's that two or 3 p.m. The key is then to try and get something really useful done cognitively again. So some people might look at this and say, wait, you're working for an hour in the morning and 30 minutes here and an hour in the afternoon. When are you actually working? But it's really about the depth of the trench when you're working. And so if I'm going to drop into something again for a few hours in the afternoon, I'm really going to drop into it. And that's typically phone off and out of the room. And my goal is to get to the evening time so that I can do the things that I want. Subscribe for more daily straight to the point self-help videos.